Yes. What if everyone said it just a little more? Would the world be a better place? A nicer place? At MU Health, we're certain of one thing, that yes makes the world a healthier place. Yes is the strength to fight doubt, the fuel to find cures, and the unbreakable resolve to keep pushing further. At Mid-Missouri's only academic health center, yes isn't just changing lives, it's saving them. Welcome to Radio Friends on Wednesday, September the 7th. Jane Whiteside is back with Good morning, with us. Paul. Good to have you here, Jane Whiteside, Missouri Symphony Society. And you've got several big things going yeah, on, Yeah, a couple right? things. Uh, we, our conservatory has always had um, a flagship choir, and we have just collaborated with Columbia Youth Choirs. Their Bella Choir, which was their flagship choir, and our choir is joining together to make a new choir. And oh. we're very excited about it. It's a, um, a treble choir, so it's for girls and unchanged voices from grades 7 through 12. They will be doing, it's an audition choir, and they will be doing auditions through um, the 11th of September. Okay. So people can call us at the office, or they can go to the Columbia Youth Choir website. So they still got a, a, a they three do. or four more days. To set up if a, you're hearing this, mm -hmm. you can call and you can audition. Set up an audition. That's right. We're very excited about this. It gives our children more performance chances. Chances. It's directed by um, Emily Edgington Andrews, who is very well known in choir circles and very respected and great with kids. Yeah. So we're excited about it. Okay. Uh, so what, what is this new choir called? It'll be called the Columbia Conservatory Choir. All right, so it's a combination of two. Mm -hmm, it is. Then the other thing you have. Well, we're kicking off our membership drive this month um, for 2017. You know, the Columbia, I um, mean, the Missouri Symphony Society is member supported. And so we will be um, sending out letters and making, you know, talks like this and reaching out to groups to encourage them, our old members to renew and new members to join. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the Missouri Symphony Society in general. Well, we are an organization that's been around for about more than 40 years. Uh, we have the Missouri Symphony Orchestra, which is a resident orchestra here in Columbia, which performs throughout the year, but is most specifically music festival, Hot Summer Nights in the Summer is our mm -hmm. big event, which is a lot of concerts, you know, like 26 concerts in six now, weeks. Many of the people in the orchestra don't necessarily live here in the Columbia. In the Columbia. summer, they don't. Our summer orchestra is a little different from our winter and fall orchestra. They come from all over the world in the summer, and yeah. they live here yeah. and join with our Columbia and Jeff City members uh, to play a little bit different configuration in the orchestra. But in the wintertime, it's all local. It's all pretty much local. Yeah, we have a lot of university folks, a lot of people who play with us in the summer also. Mm -hmm. But it's a little bit different orchestra. And we will be doing, of course, our Symphony of Toys um, at Christmas time. I think that's December 18th. And uh, along with our orchestra, we have the Women's Symphony League, which does their holiday home tour. Mm -hmm. Which will be promoting later on. Yes, I'm uh, sure they're going to be yeah, on. Yeah. They, uh, they're getting that, geared up for it. That's an important fundraiser. And plus, you get to see some pretty nice uh, Pretty, pretty nice, nice homes. homes. That's yeah. exactly right. Okay. We're very lucky to have them support our scholarship program for the conservatory. Okay, so if people want more information about any of this, they can get in touch with you yes, or anyone can. at the Missouri Symphony League. Yes, they can uh, call us at 573-875-0600 or go to our website, which is mosymphonysociety.org. Got it. Okay, Jane Whiteside, thank you so thank you. much for coming by. Appreciate it is it, always a pleasure having you here. For me too. Yeah, Thanks. Continued success with what you're doing. Thank you. Now, we're going to talk about coconut water or coconut milk? Coconut water. The coconut two water. Two different things. All right, Jennifer Bean is with us. Good to have you here, it's Jennifer. Good to be back. Central Missouri Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Yes, sir. So, what is coconut water and what is coconut milk? Okay, so there's only one coconut fruit. Um, and it comes from the coconut palm tree. Right. And the, the coconut that we're used to here in mid-Missouri is a mature coconut. So it's what's fallen off the tree and the outer side, outer husk gets kind of brown and, and, right. and hairy. Right, it's cracked over and it's taken off. And right. then you've got the, the coconut, which is yeah, in the middle the of it. The white flesh meat, which is what we're used to making macaroons with or, or something like that. And so what coconut water is, it's the liquid form, just like there's still liquid that's inside of that coconut, the, the mature coconut, but it's not fallen off the tree. It's not 
aged. So instead of having, if you were to crack it open, instead of the flesh being that flaky white, it's more gelatinous and clear. And so the liquid that's in there is not creamy or white. Because coconut milk is actually taking that, the white meat of that and, mm -hmm. and processing it with some water and then squeezing it out. So it's really not a milk. No, not at all. All not right, all. so you're saying the the green coconut, if uh -huh. you crack it open, mm -hmm. what we have the grated coconut with, mm -hmm. that's the uh, that's a mature coconut. Yes. But if you crack open the green coconut, it's going to be like a jello. Yeah, kind of like a, a little bit thicker than jello, very pasty. The flesh has very little flavor to it, and the water that's in there is, is very mildly, very lightly flavored, and that's what people are drinking. Okay, is this coconut well, water. Is that good for you? Well, that's um, as we. Um, not, not to be the, the quintessential dietitian, but that depends on your definition of healthy or good for you. So if you are using it to replace a calorie a caloried beverage or a beverage that's sweetened with sugar, then it's absolutely a healthier choice because it's going to provide you with hydration without the extra calories and a coconut little bit of water. flavor. Absolutely. Co coconut water. Okay. Yeah. Is there... Are there any nutrients in it? Absolutely, it's a great source of potassium. So other things that we usually associate with potassium, we like bananas and cantaloupes, and really any kind of fresh food. So that being said, there, um, when people were starting to drink coconut water, not coconut milk, they started to think that it might be uh, might have more properties and more healthful properties than it actually does. So while it is great for hydration, it's not like a sports drink like Gatorade. It's not a soft drink like um, vitamin water or Powerade or anything like that. So, well, okay, wait. Mm -hmm. You say it's not a soft drink. It, wouldn't it be better than a soft drink, though? It would. It would be a, a fine replacement as long as, you know, you can afford it and you're not displacing other nutritious beverages. But you say mm -hmm. it's not it's not going to replenish your electrolytes like a, a Gatorade drink right, is. Right, right. But, but you're not hurting yourself drinking this. Absolutely not. And it's all natural. It is. Okay. There's nothing added to it, yes. Right. Is it more expensive? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Unless you live in the tropics and then you can pick your own coconut. That's right. Just and shake the tree crack, and have crack it, it open down. and, yes. and uh, drink it. Yes. So it's, uh, but it, it is, um, it is flavorful. It is lower in calories. It will provide you with some potassium, but it's not going to cure Alzheimer's. It's not going to cure cancer. It's not going to fix your heart disease. Well, they're not trying to say that it is. Oh, either. that there are plenty of people trying to tout that. So that that's dispelling the myth. It's a great beverage to substitute for no calories, but it's not going to fix. Well, all where, that can stuff. you buy it in the grocery store? I've Absolutely. Never, I've seen coconut milk, but I've never seen coconut water. It's in the beverage aisle. It's not going to be in the cooking aisle where you find your and, coconut milk. And it's coconut water. Mm -hmm. coconut Does it come water. in a can? Uh, um, kind of like a brick pack, you know, like the wine that you can take to tailgate. It's not uh -huh. in a glass that's in the little boxes. They're kind yeah. of like that. So it's coconut water, mm -hmm. and it's a lot more expensive than just... Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Is that's it worth the cost or not? Well, that depends on the person. To right. me, I'd rather drink water. So. Okay. All right. If you want more information on any of this, can they go to the Central Missouri Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics website? We uh, go to eatright.org, and that'll actually get you to our National Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Okay. It'll tell you all about coconut water. More than you probably even want to know. <laughs> Jennifer Bean, thank you so much for coming Thanks. by. All right. You don't have a coconut tree in the backyard. I do, do not. They're uh, tropical. All right. <laughs> thank you. Tomorrow, Missouri Women Business Center, and we'll tell you about the out-of-darkness walk.